Hi, Tamal. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Vishal. Now, there's a dichotomy between what the government is projecting for growth and what the economic survey said yesterday. Where do you find yourself yeah. in that debate? No, it's, there's no debate. I mean, the government is more conservative and rightly so. So, um, ab absolutely uh, fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm with the finance minister. I think um, it's better to uh, you know, be conservative and then if you can overachieve, that's a separate story altogether. Uh, if you see in the current fiscal year also, in terms of revenue generation, I've seen the tax collection, etc. It has far exceeded what the government had estimated. So it's better to have a conservative estimate and overachieve than promising something or estimating something which we can't achieve. So certainly, I, I think it's a more realistic assessment by the finance ministry. The fiscal consolidation roadmap, as I'm to understand, is being strictly adhered to. What is your opinion of that? No, that's a that's a excellent key takeaway from the budget. Say so what happened is the current fiscal year six point four, the estimated um, uh, number is being adhered to. That's what they've given the impression. Now it will go down. Uh, 5.9 by 50 basis point uh, in the next fiscal year, which is 2024, starting April. And the commitment is by 2026, it should come down to 4.5. And uh, Mrs. Sitaraman said that she is committed to do that. I mean, this there is a clear glide path and she is adhering to a fine balancing act between fiscal consolidation and growth. That's how I look at this budget. Now, market borrowings are at their highest. What do you make of that one? And would it be easier for banks to get out of G6 for credit creation? Or would this make it more difficult? Yes, market borrowing is its highest. Don't go by the gross. You need to see the net. And uh, But it is in sync with what the market had expected. As you have noticed, uh, uh, after the budget, the 10-year bond yield actually dropped. So that, that shows the market's comfort with this. So while the borrowing is high, uh, it was within the line of market expectations. And when globally central banks are keen on dialing down the interest rates, I think uh, it will not be, I would not like to say it will be smooth selling, but as of now, I, I would like to say it will not disrupt the market. Within the financial sector, let's talk about the KYC process that is being eased. Then we have a national financial information registry that has been created. What would all this mean for the sector? It's absolutely uh, good for um, customers. You know, uh, KYC is a big hassle, uh, the entire process. So uh, the finance ministry wants to simplify it and make it uniform. That's one part. Uh, this credit registry, actually, I, I have written about it a few months, a few weeks back. It had been an RBI proposal, which was, I thought it was shelved. Uh, but I'm, 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 I'm happy to see this, of course, under a different name. So the credit registry actually will record all the information, both credit and non-credit um, of you, me, and everybody else. So what will happen is this. This will, the financial sector, be it banks or non-banks, they will be in a better position to appreciate your and mine financial status. So the credit flow will definitely increase. From the bank's perspective, they will be more certain about the quality of assets, the loans to which are they giving it. Because this is not only the financial uh, information, it's everybody else, e everything else, all information will be gathered. So it's, it's certainly win-win both for the customer as well as for the banking system. You've often talked about the middle class and the impact of the budget on it. Now, would you call this a depositor's budget as well, given the schemes and everything that has been launched? Yeah, I mean, you, uh, quite a few things have been done, which has been long pending, and uh, tax slabs have um, been restructured, uh, so the UK lesser tax, and then certain new um, exemptions being offered um, for senior citizen, the quantum has been doubled, and the new small savings scheme also have, have come up for women which is a fixed interest rate of 7.5. So I think, uh, because if you see the small savings scheme, uh, the collection this year is, is uh, if I'm not mistaken, the first half is almost 10% down compared to the last year. And yeah. it is bound to go down because the banks are offering higher rates. So I think, and one of the contributing factors to bridge the fiscal deficit is 
small savings. You know, small savings one, and then divestment is another, and the bulk is government borrowing. So I think keeping all this in mind, and of course uh, the sentiment um, and and the high inflation, etc. So all these things, there there are the pockets have been created, which will uh, be uh, by which the government will be able to collect more small savings. Uh, consumers like you and me will have more money in our pocket, so that will also probably uh, bolster bank uh, deposit as well as bank credit because retail credit will grow. Retail credit, if the consumption takes place, then the retail credit will grow. I mean, people will buy two wheelers and, and other things, so personal loans, etc. And the huge hike in capex also ensure the corporate credit. So I don't think banking sector should have should have a, a, anything to complain about. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thanks for coming on the show. We hope to talk to you soon again. Thank you. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration that let success so high. I will achieve. Trusted Bank, SBI, the banker to every Indian.